Hey there, I hope you're enjoying your 2020 Evoke so far. Here's a tutorial on how to use all the instrumentation. If you haven't done so already, simply hit tap to connect phone to pair up your cell phone. Refer to your settings on your smartphone and then go into Bluetooth. Under other devices, you'll then see Range Rover Evoke. Simply select that. You'll hit yes on the screen when prompted and then pair on your phone. After that, you can allow to sync contacts or deny. And once you're paired up, you'll be able to use Bluetooth for audio streaming as well. And how you get there is you hit your media screen. And then in the top left-hand corner, you'll hit source. And your phone will pop up as one of these available uh, media sources. If we hit this radio icon here, that's a shortcut to get to your radio. To tune your station, simply hit the arrows in between the frequency, or you can swipe to jump to stations. You can also find stations by hitting the find button here. <clears throat> this will give you a full station list. This keypad will allow you to input a frequency manually. And lastly, this is most handy for XM radio. If you hit the guitar icon here, this will allow you to sort by genre and then populate any stations associated with that genre. This house button here always gets you back to your home screen where you have your three most used functions, navigation, media, and phone. If we hit the navigation tab here, to input a new destination, simply hit the six squares here and tap in the search field. I'm just gonna hit okay here. And you can put in an address. It's a pretty intuitive system. So if you're searching locally, you can just put the beginning of the address and simply hit search. And the most relevant content will populate. So once you see your destination set, you have a few options before you hit start. If you hit the P, what that's gonna do is show you available parking destinations closest to your inputted destination. It'll then set that as a waypoint. The star here will allow you to save it. And if you hit the phone button, if applicable to that address, if there's a phone number associated with it, be it a business, a restaurant, it'll dial that number right from your cell phone. Otherwise, you'd simply hit start. Now, once you're in your navigation, say you want to cancel your route guidance, you can hit the six squares here and simply hit stop guidance. You'll notice the settings gear here, and here's where you can control the screen angle to compensate for any glare due to the sun. You can press the plus or minus. We have this display theme set to auto, so it'll be bright during the day and dark at night. If we go into audio settings here, here's where you'll be able to control your bass, treble, and subwoofer along with the balance of the radio. If we swipe over here to the second screen, you'll see a bunch of different submenus. Your car does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. All you would have to do is simply connect your smartphone into one of the two available USB outlets located in the center console. And you'll get a message that will pop up on your phone and on the <clears throat> touchscreen display here. You just want to allow Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And every time when you plug in, your phone screen will populate here. A few other functions, um, you have valet mode which will allow you to put in a pin number. You can select a temporary pin every time. Just remember that pin. You'd put that pin number in. What that's gonna do is once in valet mode, it's gonna lock down your system here. So the valet driver can't go into your navigation, see your save destinations, blast your stereo, and it also restricts climate functionality. To get out of that, simply put in that same pin number and it unlocks the screen. Cameras is simply your backup camera, but that'll pop up every time you put the car in reverse. Live is a part of your free Wi-Fi trial. This will show you things like weather and news updates. EcoData is essentially an advanced trip odometer. It'll show you how long your car has been running, what you're averaging for fuel, what in the car is impacting your fuel consumption, and it'll also log a history of your your fuel economy. What we'll do here is we're going to transition to the bottom screen and go to the climate settings. The car I'm in right now doesn't have some of the options your car has and I'll touch upon those when we get there. Specifically this car here doesn't have the heated seat function. To access your heated seats on your car simply press the bezel in 
and then you can turn it to the appropriate heat setting. Otherwise, when you're on the climate screen, if we were to turn that on, you'll see this icon pop up of a silhouette. You can select where you want the fan blowing, whether you want it blowing at your face, at the floor, or up at the ceiling, or any combination of those three. You'll also notice here this fan icon. <clears throat> when that is not engaged, you'll see separate temperature controls for both driver and passenger. If you want your side to dictate the temperature of the whole car, simply hit the sync button. And then this side will turn into the fan speed. That's how you can control the intensity of your fan. For whatever reason, that's not on. All you'd have to do is hit that icon with the fan, and that bezel will then turn into the fan speed. You have a row of buttons here, which will be your heated windshield and rear defroster, time to circulation, and auto functionality. Your car also has this, it's cabin ear ionization. Essentially, it's an advanced HEPA filter. You have a volume control here for the radio, and you'll notice these buttons down here. Because this is a highly pass-through area, when you press these, nothing is gonna happen. You'd actually have to press and hold it to engage that feature. Same to disengage. Now, if we pop over here to the vehicle tab, you have your terrain response selection. Your car also has automatic terrain response, so you can set it to auto and the car will intuitively select the appropriate terrain response program. But if you did wanna be proactive, you could select from one of the available terrain response systems. You'll do most of your driving on comfort. However, this one here is for grass, gravel, snow, mud and ruts, and lastly, sand. And to the far left is eco mode. So if we go ahead and hit this mountain range button here, it's gonna allow you to pull up your off-road information give you a few different submenus within there. So this will show you what your wheels are doing and where the power is being distributed. This one here is slope information, along with the compass that shows latitude, longitude, as well as the altitude. And this last icon here, essentially is gonna tell you about the program you're currently on. Another cool thing you can do with the bottom screen is, for example, say you have your navigation running up here. If you hit these two lines, what that's going to do is put your radio down here, negating the need to go back and forth between screens. And lastly here, you have a settings icon that will allow you to control some of the user settings, including what screen pops up by default every time you shut the car off. So if you want your climate screen to show up every time you stop the car by default, you could select that or any of the available screens there. Your car has a new feature called Clear Sight Rear View Mirror. If you flip the switch here, you'll notice that the rear view mirror then turns into a camera, which gives you an overall 50% better view. It's handy due to the small nature, due to the nature of the small window in the back. You'll notice this button here is for roadside assistance and this one for emergency SOS. And then of course you have your power shade, which you're familiar with. Emergency road hazards are located up there on the dashboard. Now, your steering wheel is going to look a little different as your car has adaptive cruise control, which is a pretty rare feature in the Evoque. You'll notice these two arrows on your car. That is to control the gap distance between your car and the car in front of you while in cruise control. In order for adaptive cruise control to work, you'll have to have your lane departure warning on. You'd press that button, and when it's lit up in amber, it means it's on. That's gonna give you a haptic feedback on the steering wheel, letting you know which side of the road you're drifting on. But once you're up to speed, all you'll have to do is hit set, say it's 65 miles per hour. That'll capture that speed. And your car will then be in adaptive cruise control. So as long as there is a car in front of you, your vehicle is gonna be looking at that vehicle. And if that car slows down, your car will slow down all the way to a complete stop if necessary. Cancel button here shuts off cruise control and you have your heated steering wheel button there. The LIM, like the last of Oak, is a speed limiter. I had your windshield wiper set to the auto position. If you press the indent button on the end of the stalk, what that'll do is engage the rear washer fluid, pull the stalk towards you for front washer fluid. On the left side, you have media control. So you could simply roll your finger around this bezel to raise or lower the volume of the stereo. The left and right button will seek your favorite stations, or if you press and hold the left or right button, it'll jump to the next available station. 
This phone button here is going to pull up your phone screen on your infotainment center. And the diamond button will allow you to select a shortcut function. So when you press that button and refer to your touch screen, it'll allow you to set up two functions for that button to complete. One for a short press and one for a long press. You can do things like mute the stereo, mute your phone, cancel root guidance by simply setting it up through your infotainment system. These are functions you'd otherwise have to reach over to the touch screen to perform while driving. And lastly here, we have your voice command button natural voice recognition so you could say things like call david mobile and what that'll do is it'll call right from your cell phone this okay button here will typically say menu and if we hit that it'll allow you to access your digital instrument cluster here if you wanted to change up the look of your info panel you could simply go down to info panel using the arrows on the steering wheel and hit okay and say you wanted to have your map in the middle of your two uh, instrument gauges there, it would then put the map in the middle. Your fuel gauge is located here. When it's all the way white, that means it's full, and it'll gradually sweep down towards empty as you get closer and closer to empty. And you could also change the layout of your whole instrument cluster by going to layout and select from a bunch of different views. I had your light set to auto as well before the vehicle was taken yesterday. It may not look like it's set to auto, but this is spring loaded. So as you can see, no matter where I put it, it always drops back to that center position, but they are on auto. You have your window functionality, of course, here on the side. This is familiar to you, same functionality, but if you press both of those buttons, it'll fold your mirrors in. Press them again to unfold your mirrors. I hope this tutorial provided some further information on your brand new Range Rover Evoque. If you do have any questions, don't ever hesitate to reach out to, to me directly and we'll always address your questions and I'll look forward to catching up with you soon. Many safe travels.